Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorkon, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. With us today, we happen to have her back, Joanne Fries, President and CEO of Condente Copper, trades on the TSX Big Board under the stock symbol DNT. For those of you new to the story, and you got to be paying attention, Condente owns a large economic copper deposit in Peru. It's the Canariaco Norte, 100% owned. Feasibility stage porphyry copper porphyry copper deposit uh, that's got it right now seven point five billion pounds that's not a typo measured and indicated can be mined for twenty two years once in production but who else believes in that because that's always the important thing at a Gorkom Goldman Sachs says Canadiaco Norte is one of the top eighty four projects waiting to be developed worldwide and they've got his number forty two in South America so it's attracting their attention. Deutsche Bank says uh, Canariaco is one of three projects that mentioned, uh, quote, we believe we will be required to meet the upcoming supply demand gap. Uh, also, perfect timing as pricing of copper. Goldman Sachs expects copper to break all time highs in 2022, raise their 12 month copper price target to ten and a half, uh, $10,500 per ton. Timing is perfect. Joanne, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks very much, George. Great to be here. Uh, great to have you because a historic copper shortage loom as prices rocket, according to uh, uh, articles out there. Before we get into the headline for today, where you've engaged uh, Asensco for some studies, give everyone at home, beyond what I've said, a sense for how big is Canadiaco and how great is it from a, co from a cost point of view. Well, we, I actually like to talk about 9 billion pounds of copper, 2 million ounces of gold and 54 million ounces of silver. Now that's adding your measured and indicated and inferred together. Uh, what's great about Kenyariaco is that it works at 250 copper, which is around just above $5,000 a ton. And both Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank are talking about most projects, sorry, the average incentive copper price um, is over 7,000. So we are not just a little bit lower, we're well below. Everyone's calling for higher prices. You're yeah. already good, right? Oh yeah. At 290 copper, which is the highest price of copper our sensitivity chart shows, our NPV is 1.6 billion and our RIRR is 21 and a half percent. I can only imagine what it is about $4. Uh, and when do you upgrade those numbers? I know, I know they're, uh, they're- Well, we're going to do a desktop study with Asenko at looking at a smaller, higher grade startup. We haven't discussed upgrading the numbers for the bigger project, but that obviously should be done as well. So let's talk about that with Asenko. What, you're basically giving yourself options here, right? Because you've got the mass number that, you, that I kind of mentioned then that you added on top of, but right. you're giving yourself options, the possibility of starting smaller and then work your way up. So. Tell us about you know, what you guys are thinking there strategy-wise. Sure. When we first did our, most of our engineering in 2010, 11, and 12, most, well, several projects like ours were being sold for four to six, even 600 million or even higher. And so we were in a big rush to make sure everybody knew that we were very similar to those projects and we didn't stop to really do, do something smaller. Of course, when copper prices got lower and and you know things were tougher everybody kept asking us what we would look like a lot of third parties were doing their own work on our project and and sharing with us that they had results that made it look very or showed that it could be very good on a smaller scale but now we finally have have the funding and and the time to to do that ourselves so that's what osenko is going to do is show how we can get started well, get into production on a shorter timeline with with less capex, and, and and the advantage there is just get generating cash, right? Get. Yeah, well, it depends on who builds this. I mean, if you know, odds are we'll sell it to somebody else to, and they'll build it. But oh, if you can have capex that's less than a billion dollars, the number of groups that would buy it from you and build it is a lot bigger than the num than the people that you know, would spend the 1.6 billion estimated now. Having said that, if Fortescue wants to build it, um, they, they do understand that smaller could be permitted faster. 
and and so they are going to look at the smaller as well but at the end of the day they're they're a very large company and and you know bigger is better for them and you mentioned fortescue there uh there are going to be a lot of people who are watching or listening to this for the first time yeah. uh, who is Fort, fortescue and why are they important to candente well they now own 19.9 percent of our company of our shares and they're one of the world's largest iron ore producer. They're in, based in Australia, but they're huge. I think they're fourth in the world now. And so I'm assuming that they play a, a big role in the strategy, given the fact that they're they're a strategic shareholder. Um, you know, what what is is there a larger strategy play? At, is there a larger strategy at play here, given the fact that Fortescue is such a big shareholder? Well, let me explain the Fortescue investment in us. They wanted to branch into copper. They did started a lot of exploration in Ecuador, Argentina, and Peru. And I think at some point realized that it might be easier to buy into a discovery already made than to make their own. They're very active in exploration, don't get me wrong. But they got involved with us because they could see that Canyon Riaco is already very big and could be a lot bigger because we have two other deposits. Now, when I say that, I have to um, I have to ex explain that. We have a second deposit for sure, Canyon Rackle Sewer. We've got 15 holes into it. We don't know how big it is. We don't know what the average grade will be. We have a third target that we think will be a third porphyry, but we don't have any drilling into it yet. We have the geochem, the geophysics and outcropping mineralization with some good vertical extent to it in creek beds. So I believe it's another porphyry, but until it's drilled, I can't call it that. But it must That's feel it must feel great to know you have all these options. Oh, absolutely. You, you go so uh, for shareholders. What does that mean for them? You know how how much more de-risk does that make Candente versus other companies out there? Well, I, I think it's huge because not only do we have Kenyaco Norte through pre-fees and, and part of feasibility, but then then when we look at a smaller, higher grade option for Kenyaco Norte, and then add to that Kenyaco Sewer and Quebrada Verde, that'll be huge. It just shows so much optionality. It really widens the scope of the number of companies that could want to buy us out. And on top of that, time is on, time appears to be your friend here yeah. because every day the copper shortage seems to get worse, which drives prices higher. Um, yeah, how, how, talk to us about where you think copper is going. First well, of all, the first of all, the dynamic in terms of supply and demand, and then mm -hmm. where you think that might take prices if you guys have any internal models. Yeah, we I won't predict prices, but I certainly will talk about why we're very comfortable being in the copper space and why we've stayed in it so long and sort of toughed out the, the tough times. Um, in 2010, 11, 12, copper was on a roll and a roar. And that was because so many third world countries wanted development and places like the United States needed to expand their development or, or renew a lot of their infrastructure. Now, there's so many factors involved. You start with COVID, making people realize that we all live in this world together and we need to worry about everybody's lifestyle. So everybody needs a refrigerator, a computer, they need access to health, they need access to education. Um, and, and in addition to that, viruses only live for four hours on copper. So you put in hand railings in the hospitals, hand railings in the buses, hand railings wow, I didn't know in, that. A, in the ski chalet at, at Whistler, there's already one. But four hours is all the virus can last. I mean, in a lot of other materials, it's lasting a couple of days. So it's a, it's a great health benefit. Then, of course, you add to that the zero emissions and, and electric. Yeah, the move towards electric, uh, electric, electric vehicles. And I'm sorry. I mean, people have been talking to, about going electric for years, but now they're doing it. I mean, you and I talked in December about Tesla and, you know, the fact that they use four times the amount of copper in their cars than, than a regular car, non-electric car. But it's not just Tesla, of course. Everybody's making electric cars now. They're making electric buses. Then there's all the electric charging stations. So, I mean, everything's coming together. And then you still have all these third world countries that want to develop. And, and you're getting 
a lot of synergy. And as I said, because of the whole result of COVID and everybody realizing we all have to share this planet and we have to think about our neighbors a lot more than we have before. Nobody's going to live in a glass house or wants to because everybody wants to get outdoors and, and share. And we've had a year of knowing what it's like not to be able to do that. So, um, so it's just huge. The do you number. see copper making those shifts like okay the obvious ones uh, where you talk about charging stations and the use of electric vehicles that's there's that that's a not that's that's obviously going to happen but do you see copper 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 becoming part of our everyday lives like you're saying handrails and things like that where it starts to well they should why not i mean hospitals used to use copper and they got away from it because they could do cheaper with stainless steel and and plastics but once people realize what what is life worth to us, come on, you know. So if everything goes well, Joanne, what's the outlook for the company? You know, if the 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 Osenko study, how long is that going to take? Ballpark, a four to six weeks. All right, so that's fast. That's yes. a, that's surprisingly fast, right? For for a study of this, yeah, of this gravity, of this importance. Well, it's, it, it'll be an internal study. We'll be able to share some results, but we won't be able to share any financial figures from that. So the next step after that would be the PEA, Preliminary Economic Assessment, based on what we discover in the desktop. And that, that would take around four months. And then we, we can go public with new cash flow analyses and new CapEx, new IRRs, NPVs, all that. Um, but I expect to, to have some really significant news out of the desktop and then the PEA will really crystallize a lot of that. So basically six months from now, by the end of the summer, yeah, you're gonna be in a position to decide, okay, which way are we gonna go here? Well, just to show people what the options are on the project. And, and we'll just keep marching forward. We're working on drilling permits for Canyon Raco Sewer and Quebrada Verde, working on a community agreement. And we'll just keep marching forward. But in the meantime, we can have really good news flow with the engineering studies and a much better idea of what Canyuraco really has to offer. And then the strategy is at that point, all right, you want to show the world, you'll keep moving the project along, but really at that point, it becomes uh, uh, a talent show where it's a case of who wants to come in. It becomes a pageant, right? <laughs> who wants to come in and take away Canyuraco, I guess? Yeah, well, even as you heard, you said Deutsche Bank is naming us as three, pro three, one of three projects that they believe will be needed for going forward to to supply the copper in the, you know, for this big gap. I mean, so, for them to say we believe it will be required to meet the upcoming supply demand gap, is is your phone? Is it fair to say that your phone has been ringing like everybody? who would be in this race has at least started to make overtures? Yes, I would definitely say so. And, and you can see it in our, our share, the volume of uh, trading we've had since, since you and I spoke. I mean, it didn't start the day after you and I spoke, but since the end of December, actually, December 29th was the, it, which is, as we know, last day for tax loss selling. Yeah, let that, we let that get out of the way. Yeah, we really, we were, I was starting to talk to a lot more people in November and December. And then on the 29th thing just started taking off. And I had, I did one conference um, early February. I had 30 meetings in three days with the institutional shareholders, investors. And even then your market cap right now is a pretty low market cap relative to. Yeah, it's still around 60, 50, 60 million. Yep. Um, and we were at 250 million in 2011. So that's my target, get us back there. We still own all the copper we owned then. Um, get us back to that and then go, go, go beyond. You know? and, and in fact, the, the, the project is more attractive than it was back in 2011, because we're moving into this, this, this shortage. Of exactly, as we just said, the, the reason the short, there's so many more reasons for a shortage now than there were in 2011. And so many more people believing it's a long-term need. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've always felt that copper, as I said before, gold is money, copper is life. You, you need life more than you need money. You need money, but life comes first. And there's just, you know, uh, copper long, long-term is, is the metal that is required.
I certainly didn't predict COVID and I didn't predict a lot of the factors that are driving copper right now, but I certainly believe that copper long-term is a metal that's required for, for people to have a good life. And, and again, Goldman Sachs expects copper to break all time high in 2022. They yeah. raised a 12 month copper price target to 10, ten and a half thousand dollars per ton. What is that per pound? So we can, cause I know what we- uh, Well, 250 is, is just over 5,000. Right, so, so they're looking five, at, uh, they're, they're looking at $5 plus. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not just Joanne saying it because she's, uh, uh, she's, uh, she's a conflicted CEO who has to say <laughs> these things. You got Goldman Sachs saying it. You got Deutsche Bank saying it. So last question, fair to say, Joanne, that um, Candente is in a stronger position and maybe even stronger position than it's ever been? Yes, we're not at the highest market cap, but we're definitely in the strongest position. Yes, I would right. Agree. But as far as position goes, this yeah. is the strongest the company's ever been. Totally. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, patience is a virtue, and you've <laughs> definitely demonstrated that. And uh, great news to see that this uh, this Osenko uh, study is taking place, yeah. and Don't and that's going to show you my high grade copper sample. Oh yeah, to show us what you got like there. Four percent copper. That's, that's what we found in the creek bed in Kenyaco, almost my first visit. So we're going to be looking for more of that. Keep looking. And in the meantime, the big guys will keep looking at the company and the magic will happen at some point. But great to see, like you said, this Osenko study that you're going to get the options. It's going to be yeah, nice really to hear excited. what the options we're really are. really excited to see the results of that study. There's so many aspects we're going to be looking at. And I know a lot of it's going to be really positive. I, you said, by the way, you said that you won't be able to share a lot of the numbers, but will there be something you'll be able to share from it when yeah. it when it does come out, just to let yeah. us know, generally speaking, if yeah, it went they'll, well. They'll know. We'll know that we can talk about you know the concepts, the resources, and the um, ideas we'll have of how we're going to have a smaller, higher grade, lower capex. But it's just the numbers, cash flow numbers that we can't until we do forty three one hundred one. Yeah, and that's because the forever at home, the There's rules the prevent that, that, right? Yeah. You, you yeah. can't talk numbers until the until you've done the the next the next study after that. Exactly. Yeah. Congratulations, Joanne. Great to see Candente moving along, slow yeah. and steady, right? <laughs> uh, that's what that that's what wins the race. And looking forward to having you back about four to six weeks as we want to hear all about all about the study. Okay, super. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. For all of you at home, you've been watching or listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform, to Joanne Fries, present CEO of Candente Copper, trades in the big board TSX on the stock symbol DNT. Make sure, especially for all of you who are here for the first time, you do your due diligence. You've heard uh, what Joanne had to say. I've told you what Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, and some very big names have had to say about both copper and Canariaco. So there's no doubt about the fact that that Candente is sitting in a great position, but you've got to do your due diligence. You can't just take from us. So get to the hub on Agoracom, take a look at the profile page where we've got, we've got it in the non-geology terms so you can understand in about five minutes you know what is going on there. And then make sure to link over to the Candente website from Agoracom to do your deeper dive. Because 12 months from now, we don't want you to tell us that we didn't tell you so, because today we're telling you so. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. See you next time.